do you recall uh, any key decisions you may have made, military or civilian world? And could you could you talk us through maybe the process of of making that decision? Um, maybe any of the techniques you used or how you approached a, a very difficult or, or very important decision. One of the first missions I, I went on I, after I got to Vietnam, we were ambushed on the um, on the insertion as the aircraft was setting down into a bomb crater. Uh, the North Vietnamese were all around it and they opened fire on us about two or three seconds too early. If they had just waited a couple more seconds, I, they would have had all of us. I, I mean, myself and the assistant team leader were on the skids. I had already bent my knees to jump off into the crater and I was just starting forward when they opened up. Um, and, you know, so I didn't jump. If I had jumped, there's no way I could have gotten back. But then being able to make the decision about what do I do with a team leader who got hit just as I moved, uh, getting him back on the aircraft, trying to keep me on the aircraft, trying to fire the weapon at the same time, my guys behind me firing at the same time, uh, right by my ears, you know, coming out my side of the, of the aircraft, and, and trying to decide what do I do, you know, do I lay try to lay back down on the floor of the aircraft so I'm a smaller target? Do I continue to set up and fire uh, the muzzle flashes that I'm seeing? And what do I do with you know my team leader that I'm hanging on to with one hand here to keep him in the aircraft? So uh, you know a lot of decisions had to be very, very made very quickly because the whole thing was over in two minutes. I mean, about two minutes we were finally starting to lift out and move forward. So it had to be done quickly. And in the civilian world, um, there are decisions that we make with the, with the company about uh, clients that we're willing to work with or not want to work with. There are things that clients do um, when we're with them sometimes that, you know, maybe a CEO or a senior leader uh, starts down a particular path with his people or her people, uh, and you see right away, this is not good, and you have to intervene. So you have to figure out, how do I do this tactfully? Uh, so that the leader doesn't look bad. So you're always making decisions like that. And sometimes what I do is I set up visual cues with them. There's things that, that I'll give them as, as signals that, that suggest that maybe we take a break without me having to say anything. Um, you know, once you establish that rapport with them. If, if we look at it from a, from a stress point of view, because obviously that's a very stressful, having to make a key decision like that is very stressful. Um, I wonder if you could tell us about stress that you've observed, either in yourself or in others, leaders or subordinates, actually. Um, and, and what did you see and what were the indicators and how did they deal with that stress, for better or for worse? Yeah, it, sometimes it's very difficult to see. <coughs> Excuse me. There are some people who manage what you see on the outside uh, very well and you don't realize where their level of stress is unless... Unless you're trained to be able to look at, you know, blotches on the skin, uh, you know, facial expressions, listen to the change in their voice, uh, things like that, it's very difficult to know that some of those people are, are really stressed. Uh, again, going back to uh, one combat example, uh, the team leader that I went out with the first three times, because the rule was you couldn't lead the team yourself until you'd been on three missions. Uh, I was just always impressed with him, and in a firefight, I mean, he was just the coolest person I'd ever seen, and, and what he could do. Uh, and on the third time, we'd had a particularly uh, aggressive bout, and we were trying to get out. And we finally suppressed the fire enough that uh, they could get a chopper in, and we could get on it. And as we were lifting off, what he would normally be doing is firing, you know, out the door at the bad guys as we were lifting out. And he wasn't doing it this time. And I, caught, I could see him out of the corner of my eye. And what he was doing, he was in the center of the helicopter and he was throwing up. And I thought, wow, you know, that's strange. And so after we got out a little ways, I asked him is he, if he was okay. And he said, I, I can't do this anymore. But he went from being just as hardcore as you can imagine uh, to saying, that's it. I, when we get back, I'm going to tell them they got to take me out. I can't do this anymore. So sometimes you can manage it right up until a switch flips, and then you can't do it. Uh, other people, you know, you see see it coming, you know, ahead of time, and you can 
talk to them, you can work with them. Uh, being aware of the stress of the different members on your team, very important as a leader. Managing stress is, is key to being an effective leader, particularly you know, in a combat situation. Uh, and in a place like Afghanistan, Iraq, where you're going out every day, I mean, the stress builds up. It accumulates across time. And, and it's varying from person to person because you're getting the stress of, uh, from being in country, but you're also getting the stress of what's happening at home. Uh, you know, when, when I was in, working in Southeast Asia, we didn't have email. You didn't get all. I got a letter, you know, coming, but it would have it'd be a week old, things like that. Uh, so you didn't have that instant communication so that you knew whatever was going on at home. You didn't get a letter saying, you know, the washing machine broke today. What do I do? Uh, piling on top of everything else that you've got going on. So in a leadership position, you've got to be able to watch your people, know them well enough that you see these changes in stress, uh, and if there's a way you can rotate people around, uh, sometimes you need a break. Sometimes I just need to not go out there today and it be okay. Uh, I need a good hot meal, you know. I, I, I need a, a little downtime. And, you know, there's some research that's going on now that's actually looking at how do you measure that. How can I put a sensor on you that tells me as, as the commander or the team leader, squad leader, uh, where your stress level is. So we might have a sniper that we're trying to take out or a position we're trying to get by, and I look at my, my screen and say, oh, Major Alderman is a little tight right now. I might, I might need to send uh, Joe on this mission because he's much calmer than anybody else that I have. So managing your stress and knowing where you are real time can help me make better decisions. Managing my own stress, even in a, a civilian situation, uh, you know, I find myself uh, at times where I say, I'm not going to make this decision right now. This is a very important decision and with a lot of things going on and I can feel my stress level is elevated. So I'm not going to do this for 30 minutes and I'm going to do some other things to distract myself get my stress level back down some so that I can make a better decision. So I'll tell my guys sometimes, we're gonna revisit that tomorrow and make the decision. Today's not a good day to make it, you know, if it's something that can wait. Uh, so when working with, with leaders and organizations, I tell them, know where you are. Be aware of your current stress level and the impact it's gonna have on the decision that you're about to make.